Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to insert an indwelling Foley catheter on a male patient. So let's get started. First, what you wanna do is you wanna confirm that you have an order for the procedure. Then perform the patient's rights. Make sure you have the right patient, that you're doing the actual right procedure that was ordered, and so forth. Then you just want to educate the patient about what is going to take place and answer any questions. And this is a great time to confirm their allergies. You're looking for two big ones, iodine and latex. And if they do have those allergies, you want to make sure that you have the right supplies to accommodate those allergies. In addition, it's a good idea to have someone assist you with this procedure because it's good to have an extra set of hands. Then gather your supplies, perform hand hygiene, and don a pair of clean gloves. Then next, you want to make sure that you position the bed at a proper height so you're not breaking your back while you're doing this procedure and then position your patient for the male patient you're going to have them lie back and you're going to have their legs extended and apart now during patient positioning this is a great time to place a waterproof pad under the patient just to protect the linen and to make cleanup easier then once you're done with that doff your gloves perform hand hygiene again and don another pair of clean gloves now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up for peri care and in this fully Tray, it actually has soap wipes that assist me with doing this. Now I also have an extra pair of sterile gloves because sometimes the gloves that come in the kit don't fit. So let's open up this kit and get set up. So I'm going to take this tab off here and just pull the kit out like so. Discard this bag to the side and then pull this off and here underneath everything is our directions for use, our little stickers that we're going to use later and the periurethral care. So we've already washed our hands and donned clean gloves and we've explained the procedure to the patient. Now we're gonna take out these towelettes and we're going to open that and there's three of those and we're gonna clean and then afterwards, it has some hand sanitizer where we'll perform hand hygiene again. So before you provide peri care to the male patient, you want to assess the penis. You wanna see if it's circumcised or uncircumcised. The penis here is circumcised. If the patient was uncircumcised, there would be a fold of skin that would be covering the glands, hence the head of the penis. And this skin must be retracted back so we can expose the urinary meatus and the glands of the penis and we'd have to clean this area. So here are our Castile wipes that's going to assist us with peri care. I'm going to open these. So I'm going to take the first wipe here and open it up. And I'm going to clean the urinary meatus area first. So I'm going to take my non-dominant hand, I'm going to hold the penis at the shaft. Again, if this was an uncircumcised penis, I would need to retract that skin back. And I'm gonna start at the urinary meatus and I'm gonna clean in a circular motion like this. And then I'm gonna discard this wipe. Now I'm gonna take the second wipe and I'm going to clean starting at the top of the shaft, going downward in a circular motion and I'm going to go all the way down to the base of the shaft and then discard this wipe. Then I'm gonna take the third wipe and I'm gonna clean each side of the groin and then I'm going to clean the scrotum, extending all the way from the front to the back to the anus. Once that's completed, you want to doff your gloves and then perform hand hygiene. Now I'm gonna to prep to open up the Foley tray. So I'm gonna take the tray, put it in between the patient's legs and I'm gonna orient the tray toward the insertion side. This is what this little arrow is telling me to do. Now I'm going to open up the CSR wrap. That is the white wrapping that you see. So we are going to peel this off like this. And you have to open this in a certain way so you don't contaminate the inside. So I wanna open up the top tab and you have about a one inch border. So I'm going to pull that like this. Then I'm gonna take the side tabs, this tab, pull it here. Then I'm gonna take this tab, pull it over here. And then I'm going to take my last tab and I'm going to pull it like so. So once you open the wrap, sometimes it doesn't extend all the way. So again, you have that one inch border that you can pull and extend it out if you need. Now the first thing you're gonna do and grab out of your kit 
are the sterile gloves. So you're gonna take your sterile gloves, which are right here, and you're gonna put them on a clean surface to put them on. So I'm gonna open these up, and I wanna find the tabs, because my fingers are gonna go under these tabs. I'm gonna pull this open, have a one inch border so I can spread this out, making them easier to work with. I'm gonna glove my dominant hand first. So I'm gonna grab the inside cuff of the dominant glove and I wanna just put my finger, my hand in there. Then I'm going to take this glove sterile hand, put it under the cuff of the non-dominant glove and then I'm going to glove this hand. And then just adjust them. Now I'm going to drape the patient with the two drapes that come in the kit. This will help extend our sterile feel. So this first drape is the under pad drape. It has two sides. We have a dull side and a shiny side. The shiny side goes on the surface. So I'm going to take this drape and just let it sort of drape over my gloves and I'm going to have my assistant lift the patient and I'm going to place this under the bottom. You want to be really careful not contaminating your gloves. So I'm going to let that under pad just go under there and position it. Next I'm going to apply the fenestrated drape. This is the drape with the hole. Again it has a shiny side and a dull side as well. So we are going to take this and we want the penis to be in the hole of the drape. So again, I'm going to take it, let it just drape over my hands so I don't contaminate my sterile gloves. And I'm going to lay it like this and then just slightly adjust it. Now I'm ready to prep the inside contents of this kit. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the iodine. So let's open this. Then I'm going to pour this iodine on my swabs. Now I'm going to attach the water syringe to my Foley. So this is where you do this. This is where you want to look to see how much water you have to put in and what size catheter it is. It's a 14 French, so you just want to keep in mind of that for documentation. I'm going to put this in the port and I'm going to not check the balloon. And the reason we don't check the balloon is because it could change the shape of the balloon and cause tears within the urethra. So I'm just going to let that set right there. The next we're going to take this lubricant and we are going to inject that here in this area because we're going to coat the tubing of the Foley. Now there's one thing I want to mention about lubricant. For male patients and even sometimes female patients, the healthcare provider may order a lubricant to be instilled actually inside the urinary meatus. And this will um, sometimes have lidocaine in it and this will help ease the discomfort of the procedure and expand that urethra so you can insert the Foley easier. So just always confirm that you have orders for that. And just for this demonstration, I'm going to insert this lubricant here in this area but I'm also gonna keep some back so I can show you how to actually put it in the urinary meatus whenever we can actually do that part. So I'm gonna put that right here. And then next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to coat the catheter. So you wanna be really careful when you pull this catheter out of its little plastic sheathing so the catheter doesn't go flopping everywhere. So we're gonna take this and we are going to coat generously big part of the Foley. About up to five to seven inches, whatever your hospital requires in their protocols. And then we're just gonna let that set there. Now we're gonna clean the penis with the iodine prior to insertion. So I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand and if this was an uncircumcised penis, I would retract the foreskin, but it's not. So I'm going to grab the penis here and hold it. And now that my hand has done this, it is no longer sterile. So it must stay here during the whole procedure until I'm done inserting. I'm gonna take the first iodine swab. I'm going to start at the urinary meatus and I'm going to go in a circular motion and I'm going to clean all the way down the penis with this, starting here at the top and we're going all the way down to the bottom, and then we're gonna discard this. Now I have my second iodine swab, and I'm going to repeat the same procedure I just did the first time. Again, starting at the urinary meatus, going in a circular motion, and we're gonna go all the way on that shaft, and then all the way to the base, and then I'm gonna discard this. Then I have my third swab, and again, I'm going to start 
at the urinary meatus in a circular motion. And I'm gonna go all the way down once again to the base then I'm going to discard. Now that I've completed this, if the healthcare provider has ordered for lubricant to be instilled inside the urinary meatus, this is when you would do that. So to do that, you want to hold the penis up at about a 90 degree angle. You want to take the prescribed amount of lubricant and you're going to insert the tip of the syringe inside the meatus. And then you're slowly going to instill the prescribed amount of lubricant. Now, once you have done this, you will need to dispose of this. Do not put it back in your tray. And then you'll want to wait up to three minutes if this lubricant had lidocaine in it because it needs to have time to actually numb the area before you insert. It's been three minutes, so now we're ready to insert. So I'm gonna hold the penis up at about a 90 degree angle for insertion, and I'm going to grasp the catheter tubing at about five inches before I actually insert it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the patient breathe in and out. That's gonna distract the patient, plus it could help possibly relax that urethra as I'm inserting. So I'm listening for those breaths in and out. When I hear an exhale, I am going to insert, hear an exhale, and I'm just going to push that through. Okay, and then I'm going to go all the way up to the bifurcation. And I see urine, so it tells me I'm in the bladder. Now follow your hospital's protocol of how far they want you to insert it on the male in the bifurcation, that ensures it's in the bladder. So now that I am there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my non-dominant hand because the insertion part's over, the sterile part. So we are going, I'm going to remove my non-dominant hand and I'm gonna take it and hold this catheter in place because I don't want the bladder to contract this catheter out. So while that's stabilizing for me, I'm gonna take my dominant hand and I'm going to inflate that balloon and it shouldn't hurt the patient at all. They shouldn't report any pain. Okay, I've inflated the balloon. I'm gonna disconnect and discard that. Now what I'm gonna do is I want that balloon to be positioned in the bladder so it can stay in place. So I'm gonna gently just pull back on this catheter. I have a little bit of resistance there and that tells me that the balloon is in the bladder. Before you secure the catheter, if your patient is uncircumcised, you want to take that foreskin that you had retracted and put it back into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and discard this per my facility's protocol. And I'm gonna get the patient covered up. Now it's time to secure the catheter. And you wanna do this per your facility's protocols. For male patients, generally you're going to extend the leg and select a site on the front upper part of the thigh. However, if the patient has a long-term indwelling catheter, it is placed on the lower part of the abdomen with the penis pointing towards the stomach. This will help prevent the catheter from eroding that urinary meatus. So here's the actual device itself, and then there's a skin protectant pad, which is gonna be applied prior to actually putting it on. So let's put it on. So the first step of what you wanna do before you place this on the patient is that you wanna put this actual catheter in the retainer, because we don't wanna put this on the patient's skin and then clamp it shut. It's not gonna to feel too good to the patient. So we have the arrow, see this arrow here, it's pointing towards the insertion site. That is where we wanna go. So we have the arrow pointing. We're gonna take the bifurcation of the catheter and there's this little part right here hanging off this white part. It's going to just set in between this catheter right here. See, like that, it's right there. And then we're going to close it shut by pressing these little lines right here. We're not gonna press in the middle. We're gonna press those lines and it's nice and in place. Now we wanna find a spot to put our stat lock. So make sure the patient's leg is completely extended. We want some slack in this catheter line. We don't want too much or too little. So according to the manufacturer, they say pick your spot and then go back about an inch. And that is about where you wanna go. So you wanna keep note of this because this is the area you're going to clean. We're gonna clean this whole area with alcohol prep and then with skin prep. So I'm gonna put my fingers here just to remind me. 
I'm taking my alcohol prep and I'm cleaning this area. I'm going to clean an area that's even bigger than that stat lock device. We want to remove any dirt and grime that is on this skin. And then we're gonna let that dry completely. Now that that has dried completely, I'm gonna take the skin prep and I'm gonna clean that whole area again. But this is just protectant to protect the patient's skin because these stat locks stay on the skin for a while, especially if they're gonna be having an indwelling catheter. And you wanna change these stat locks out according to your facility's protocol. It's usually about every seven days. And while you're waiting for your site to dry, you want to put your initials in the date for when you inserted this so the person behind you will know when to change this out. Now that it is dry, we're ready to place the stat lock on the skin. So to do that, we are going to pull back one side of the adhesive and just place that on the skin, rub that down. Then we're going to pull the other back off, put that on the skin, and then just put it down. And again, confirm your arrow is pointing to the, towards the insertion site. Now that we've done that, we wanna position the drainage bag. There's two things we wanna remember about this drainage bag and tubing. First thing is that this bag needs to be kept below the patient's bladder at all times, never on the floor, and never position it on the part of the bed that's a movable part because we don't want that catheter to come out. Plus, this tubing doesn't need to have any kinks or loops in it. It really needs to be a straight line and we wanna make sure we position the bag so it does have a straight line so gravity can easily drain that urine. So we will put this drainage bag at the foot of the bed on a designated hanging spot where it should go and we're gonna use this part. This is called a sheet clip. We will connect this to the sheet some spot to help keep the tubing in that straight line. And then once you get that taken care of, you can take the stickers that came with your tray, put them wherever your facility wants you to put them. Once we have all of that done, we're gonna finish cleaning up our supplies, make our patient comfortable, doff our gloves, perform hand hygiene, and then we are going to document. Okay, so that wraps up this demonstration. If you'd like to watch an insertion on a female, you can check out my video in the description below.